We do. We've just gone live, so the meeting is being recorded now. Thank you. Good evening, um, working group. It is Wednesday, 31st of March, and it is 5.33, and we're calling this meeting to order. We have a quorum, and I'm going to uh, take our roll, if you please. Uh, Ms. Walker? Here. Ms. Owen? Here. Ms. Ferreira? Here. Mr. Vernon Jones? Here. Welcome all of you, and I'm sure we're, the others of us will be joining very shortly. Um, welcome also to the community members who are joining us this evening, and we're happy to have you and uh, welcome your comments, which we will in a few minutes when we do public session. Uh, let me go right into a, a brief description of our agenda. Um, let me say, first of all, in terms of the approval of the minutes, I want to thank um, Ms. Moyston for working diligently to, to catch us up with minutes. We received these uh, two sets of minutes today. And so while we have just received them, what I'd like to suggest that the, the working group do is read and be prepared to comment on those at the next meeting for dis, uh, discussion and approval. So we will we'll pretty much suspend that for the moment, but since we do have them, we have been plenty of time to approve them for next time. We're going to open the meeting up with a public comment. And uh, time is Pat. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, we're going to open up for public comment and as we always do, we see if there are any comments from our working group members to begin our meeting. Our action um, and discussion items will always have at this point a uh, consultant discussion, which is really an opportunity for our consultant group, Seven Generation Movement Collective to be with us, to give us updates on their work and give us a chance to have a conversation with them about uh, next steps going forward. Last week, we talked about our community our resource initiatives, responder initiatives. We didn't get very far with that. We're gonna revisit that and see what direction we need to take as a group with respect to, to CRESS, since we all had a lot of feedback and we uh, pretty much got bogged down in a, in a lengthy discussion uh, of importance, by the way, in the first part of it. So we didn't get very far into it, so but we'll come back to that and make sure we keep moving forward. Um, there is a letter that uh, a couple of us in subcommittee are working on to uh, send to the town council relative to our uh, work as a community safety working group. And we're gonna talk about um, that letter in particular, and then the next steps on how to get it in final form and what um, what we plan on doing with it relative to the town council. And then uh, an agenda that item that appeared on the last agenda, last meeting where we didn't get to it was uh, planning for a meeting with the uh, Chief Livingstone and we'll, we'll get to that. That hopefully will not take too long, but um, we'll try to make a point to come to some conclusion and agreement on what's gonna happen with that. Um, as always, we will go through our upcoming events, set our next meeting date, and if there were any items that didn't come um, before the chair within 48 hours in advance, we'll bring those items up at that particular time, and then we'll move to adjourn. So uh, uh, welcome, Ms. Bowman. I, I, I see you popped in, glad you're here. And as I stated, we're gonna go right, we're gonna, I'm asking the, the, the group to take a careful look at the, the minutes that were in your packet for the, for February 17th and for March 24th. Um, thank you again, Ms. Moisson, for putting those together. We will approve those uh, next meeting. 
and you know if other uh, notes come forward before then you know we'll work on those as well. Uh, let me go straight to public comment and uh, open it up to our community members who may be present with us. You'll be recognized by Ms. Moiston and uh, we'll open it up to our community for a comment. At this time, no one has their hand raised. Okay, okay we'll, we'll wait a moment. Okay. I see in our attendees, we uh, at least a couple of the folks in the attendee list are uh, in our consultant group who will be updating us very shortly. So if there are no comments coming in, Ms. Moisten, none yet? No, there is not, no. Okay. Thank you, then we'll just move on. Uh, community uh, safety working group members, any any comments? Uh, I have one, but I'll, I'll defer to others if um, they have any at this time. Ms. Pack. Hi, everyone. Hi. I, I just wanted to uh, comment about the rally on Saturday uh, to support Asia community downtown. Uh, for me personally, it was very, um, meaningful for me because I know little about Asian community. And just to hear uh, <clears throat> people speak out and speak true to the power was very uh, helpful. So I learned a lot about Asian community and I just want to, it was very uh, good that the, the community is you know, supporting uh, the Asian American here. So I just wanted to mention that. Thank you, Ms. Pat, for, for that recognition of that event and, and the acknowledgement. Um, for those who are in our audience listening, I just want to remind you too that uh, this is an example of the kind of outside of the meeting learning and uh, research and participation that goes on with our group uh, on an individual basis on a, and on a regular basis. Uh, there are a number of things going on in terms of our reading, our research, and our participation in events. So uh, thank you, Ms. Ms. Pat, and um, you know, thank everybody else. Other comments from the, the group? Mm -hmm. uh, not seeing any- oh, uh, No, Mr. Vernon Jones has his hand raised. Oh, you did? Okay, I see it. Ooh. You can kind of blend it in with the background there, man. Like you chameleon, you chameleoned me, <laughs> as they say. Thank white you. White people, when there's white paint on the walls, you know. Just... I know, man. You gotta, you gotta change that, brother. Uh, I well, have a conversation first, with you about that. <laughs> uh, I wanted to echo what Ms. Pat said. I thought it was a remarkable rally on the common and one of the most public, visible uh, demonstrations of solidarity among different groups uh, of people of color and, and the rest of the community. I thought it was really a, just a remarkable event. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to say, if it has not come up in some other way on our agenda, when we get to the items not anticipated, I would ask that we have a brief conversation about outreach to the business community uh, and also uh, just a mention of how we might address some of the things that were in the um, column in the Gazette uh, this morning it was a response to the Northampton report. It seemed like there's some things there that we might want to make a plan to at least investigate. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones, for, for both of those those comments. You know, very important. Uh, I might say I, I we certainly could put that in the um, uh, the other topics section. Uh, but also, I want to say if there's an opportunity to, to 
preface of foreground, any of those particular comments uh, during our earlier discussion, I would say, please feel free to bring it forward. And um, yeah, we'll talk about it as is applicable to what we're, what's on our agenda. I wanted to just say- Well, things. sorry, one, yeah. one question. The thing that was in the Gazette, is that different than what was in the bullet? Oh. I guess, Mr. Brown Jones, you could answer that. <clears throat> and also, well, Ms. Moisten, can I see her? Can I see the hand raised? Am I able to see that? Because I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't raise my hand. Sorry. Oh, okay. You should be able to, yes. But yeah. All right. Thank you. Go ahead. I just, the, the thing I was referring to was a column um, by Al Simon uh, in this morning's Gazette, Policing Report. This is in Northampton, a good first step, but area is lacking. I, oh, had, okay. I hadn't seen it before this morning. Oh, okay. So I wasn't sure if there was something else after the thing that um, Mr. Bachelman sent. All right. That's all I want to know. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Uh, Ms. Pereira. Yeah. And I guess for me, it's just that I didn't see the article. So I don't know what, what the specifics are. So I don't know if it would be appropriate to bring it in when we're discussing other parts um, at some point or at the, you know, things that weren't anticipated, but I'd like more background too mm -hmm. on it, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Other comments? So the, the comment I wanted to make is that um, I, and I think this is sort of in fitting with, in what what Ms. Pat was talking about, um, what I brought up last week about the um, the, the, the shootings um, in Atlanta, and now currently, you know what's going on uh, in full view of our country and the world with the trial of uh, Officer Chauvin. And I, I think just as for us, not that not for us to, dis, us to discuss necessarily, but as this unfolds in front of us, it reminds us of the, of the importance of our work to try to get to a place where we can actually serve our country, uh, and our, our city, excuse me, and our country certainly, but our, 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 our city in a way that, that's going to be healthy, that's going to be safe. And is especially going to be uh, healthy and safe for BIPOC people. Um, as this thing unfolds, there's a lot of emotions going on. I just want to highlight the fact that you know last week's meeting was very emotional for some of us, and probably maybe more than some. And in the midst of that, trying to for for us, I want to keep reminding us of the importance of our charge. As while we carry and hold these emotions, we also carry a huge responsibility to, to move forward in a very pr productive way to get a lot of work done so that we can influence the decisions uh, at the town and, and local level. So just saying that, uh, that it, it's present in the atmosphere right now and it's gonna affect people. And I hope that as we absorb these things, we can also translate it into some really strong action and purpose so that um, you know we can stay on point and, and move forward in, in, in our work. And um, so, I mean, that was it um, for me. And that comes with a, a thank you to everybody for continuing to do what you, what you do. Um, if there are no other comments, um, Ms. Moisson, I'd like to, uh, go to our consultant discussion. Uh, I do believe uh, Dr. Shabazz and Dr. Lesdowski are here and present. Hi. Hi, all. Hi, Dr. Lesdowski. How are you? Uh, good, thanks. How's everyone? Good. Hi, Dr. Good. Shabazz. Hi. Hello. Welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, this is the second week seeing us. We hope you're done with all of your work. 
but knowing that you're not. <laughs> we are eager to hear uh, both your updates uh, and any questions you have for us, but also anything we can do on our half to uh, support and encourage your work going forward. So, uh, Dr. Shabazz, you and I are kind of point people for this, so I'll begin with you and I'll, I'll let you and uh, Dr. Lazdowski uh, continue the update. Well, I really want to um, say that our group has been very busy this week. Um, Dr. Ladowski, uh, Dr. Johnson Anderson, and Terry Mullen, and also all our community ambassadors uh, have really been working um, furiously to uh, do this research, to make it meaningful. Um, I think our uh, community ambassador seems seem to have, you know, finally gotten there. Um, I don't know in the swim of things, so to speak. Um, and I'll let Dr. Ladowski speak more to that. But I, you know, it's it's really a pleasure working with them. These are all such very capable people, um, and I just think I'm the luckiest person in the world to uh, be doing this this really important work and meaningful work with um, these great minds and who are just as committed as I am. So, Dr. Ladowski, you want to? Uh, give them a uh, <laughs> let them know Rundown. what they've been doing this week. Yeah, sure, sure thing. Um, thank you all. I will report that we had our third third session workshop on Sunday afternoon. Um, the purpose of that session was really to get people ready to go. Right, we focused a lot on the informed consent and assent form, which is needed um, for research participants to sign. Um, goes over all the different ways that they will be protected and the way that the research remains confidential and such. Um, we went through Zoom. Um, everyone was equipped with a Zoom account for their interview process. Um, people will be conducting interviews or focus groups over Zoom, or they will be meeting people in a more traditional face-to-face -face, um, capacity to collect their data. Um, so it was really a, a check-in about an hour and a half for us to make sure people felt, our ambassadors felt ready to go. And um, prior to that, we had discussed research questions, so they have those. Um, and now they're out in the field and we are seeing the impact of that already. Lots of different troubleshooting has been going on. Um, Terry has been carrying the tech troubleshooting, which is fantastic. And, um, you know, a lot of different late night conversations with folks. Um, and they are already well on their way um, to setting up interviews or focus groups and, and conducting them as well. It is crunch time. They have until Sunday to collect their data, at which point on Monday, we will um, get all of the different transcripts, transcriptions rather, of um, their conversations and start to do some data analysis with them. So that's where we are. And then um, Dr. Johnson Anderson and myself, we will stew in the data for quite a bit of time and um, come up with the, the themes that emerge from that data and um, start on that, you know, that section of the report. I'm happy to take questions. Just real quick, I, I want to point out um, that this, uh, what, what Dr. Ladowski has described is the participatory action research model. So um, we recruited community ambassadors. Uh, those com community ambassadors, as Katie indicated just in her description there, um, then met and discussed what would be the important questions to ask their community members. Um, and then now they're following through with that. So um, it's just, you know, fascinating when it works. <laughs> yeah. And we're, we're excited about, uh, you know, the getting into the data. 
And just to echo Dr. Shabazz, they are included at all stages of the research process. So even drafting that informed consent form, right? It's about drafting it, getting their feedback, putting more into it based on their conversations. Even in terms of compensation, right? Our, our research participants will be compensated with a gift card, getting their input, the community ambassadors input about, you know, what makes sense? What, what do your, would your participants value in terms of whether it be restaurants or supermarkets or whatnot? So um, they're included at all, all phases of this research, which is highly intentional, but takes more time as a result. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for that. I, I'd like to, before I take a couple of questions, I see Ms. Pat, you had your hand up first, then Ms. Pereira. I just do want to acknowledge um, and, and thank Mr. Bachman for being here. I meant to do that earlier. Uh, given the fact this is the weekly meeting, it's a lot of attendance time and, and I certainly appreciate the commitment. And I know there are probably some things, um, uh, uh, Dr. Shabazz, you want to talk about relative to the, the work with the ambassadors, and I'll, I'll go come back to you in a minute, but I want to uh, defer to uh, Ms. Pat, uh, please, would you have a question or a comment, and then Ms. Ferreira. Actually, I would let uh, Dr. Shabazz finish her presentation. I can wait. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. I can hear you. I'm yeah. here for the duration, so I don't want to hold up Katie, so if you all have uh, questions oh, okay. for for Katie, um, that would be great. Okay, I'll go then. Um, actually, mine is not question. Um, I just want to thank Seven Jane for uh, recruiting um, uh, Ambassador that quickly and what you guys have done so far. And I think it's a it's a good thing that you guys reassured um, the researchers, meaning the ambassadors, that it's going to be confidential. Uh, confidential because I know it's a tricky issue, people are very fearful in this town. And for people to want to do mm -hmm. this and be reassured about confidentiality, I think it's a good thing. Um, thank you guys for doing that. That's what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat, for that offering. In fact, that's probably after Ms. Ms. Ferreira, I'd like to maybe jump to that very quickly because it's related to what we're talking about here. Uh, Ms. Ferreira? Yeah. So thank you so much. I mean, obviously um, all the work that you all are doing, it sounds very intentional. I just have a couple of questions just in terms of like who you all are um, interviewing, things like that, not in terms of identity or anything like that, but just kind of like numbers. Um, so first, I guess like, you know, I how are you all, because I am I was hoping that you'd get folks that of course speak other languages, folks that obviously, you know, like you said, I was happy to hear that you, you, you know, I know it's, it's, it's COVID time, but I'm happy to hear that they'll, they'll be able to do some in, in person, you know, hopefully with the social distancing and things like that, because I know a lot of the folks that I know I'm interested in hearing from, they're not gonna be able to do things by Zoom, you know? So I guess that's my questions like around, you know, translation, terp interpreting um, services, you know, how is that going? And then um, when you said that by Sunday, you know, you're gonna be getting um, the interviews back, I guess, like were they, were they all given like, okay, well, you need to interview X amount of people. Was that the way it happened and stuff? So this is a question, you know, I have. Um, also in terms of, you know, yeah, like identities and cross intersections and stuff like that. How were you all identifying, you know, folks to, to uh, interview, um, I think was, was my third um, question. So I just wanted to get a little bit more idea of that kind of overall sense of how you all are getting this information. Katie, if, if, if I may, you have if, a moment uh, and to oh, stay, great. because part of my presentation mm. involves your re the recruitment of the community ambassadors, and maybe you could speak to that. I just want to sure. say that real quick. So sure. You leave. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, so to answer those questions, which are, are great, thank you, Ms. Ferreira. I would start by saying we were intentional in our recruitment of the community ambassadors so that we do have a multilingual group so that we would eliminate the need for interpretation. Because when you add an interpreter, it adds another layer of one complexity for research sake, but also that confidentiality is um, could be more compromised. Um, so we have um, speakers, I think I mentioned 
who speak four additional languages in collectively speak four additional languages in addition to English. Um, in terms of the way they will recruit, the community ambassadors will recruit what we're hoping for would be seven people each. Now, the time constraint is a good limitation and we also are dealing with weekends that are filled with Passover celebrations and Easter celebrations on the bookends of their main data collection um, week. So um, the goal is seven. So we'll, you know, we'll, we'll hope for that. Um, in terms of the identities of the participants, we, the first, one of the first questions that the ambassadors will ask the participants is to identify themselves racially, uh, their ethnic group, um, their gender identity, some basic overall um, identity, um, what do I want to say, markers, so that we can then code for that, right? So we could code to see if there's trends amongst people who identify as male or trends amongst people who identify as um, Asian American, Pacific Islander, etc. cetera. Um, your other question, I think that's about it, but it really is um, people starting in their own general circles, but also a lot of outreach, like for those of you who were there at um, the event on Saturday, we were able to make an announcement, pass out flyers. So it's a lot of snowballing too, so that it's not just this idea that, you know, everyone they're interviewing is their friends or, you know, family members or whatnot. It's mm -hmm. out, you know, outreach. Sorry, just one just, just also age in terms of making sure that there's some young people that are being interviewed and things yep like that. so and like like i said we have a consent and assent form which means we've got people under 18 whose parents have to consent in order for them to be involved in the data collection but our age range is um you know ranging from teenage years to elders um i have a, a question um for you, um, in terms of this, the, the ambassadors going out and you know getting seven folks. The, this this blanket sounds like it's being spread pretty far and wide. Are does it have enough coverage to ensure that we uh, engage as much as humanly possible the the BIPOC community in 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 this town? And to get their responses, and if there's any um, any question as to whether we're not doing that, is there another level of intervention that you could think about going to that would elicit more responses or deeper responses? And I think this is feeding back into what Ms. Ferrer was talking about. That this is pretty layered in terms of categories. You know, the the age, the, the gender, the gender identification. Uh, you know, we could also think a little bit, uh, if it's possible, at, at least on a, on a, on a subjective basis in, in some respects, uh, even what e economic levels we're looking at here, I, I think, because it's, you know, that, that's a piece of it. So it's multi-layered. I'm sure you understand that. So I'm not, you know, I'm preaching to the choir in that sense, but, um, the, the kinds of questions that are even raised are sometimes ones that would be more likely to be answered by certain groups and less likely to be answered by others, depending on the, the phraseology of the question. So um, just saying all of that to say that that's on my mind, I certainly leave it to you. That's why we have you all here to, to cover as much of the ground as we can and to ensure that we, we, we get the information. I think that the last piece of that is if we're looking at Sunday um, as sort of the, uh, the the point where now you start looking at, at data, do you expect you'll have enough information at that time to begin making some, you know, at least fairly substantial comments about, once you look at the data, you know, about what it is this community is is giving back to us and of course it's a lot dependent we don't know what the questions are but you know that that whole thing 
Or are you feeling like, you know, hey, if we come up short, we're going to have to dive back into this again? Mm. No, I'm confident we'll have a strong set of data. Um, what the challenge will be is, as I said, stewing in it, right? And really, yeah. I mean, if you can imagine people having conversations, which at minimum will be, you know, half an hour, that's a lot of written narrative to go through. Um, so it's a, it's a strenuous process, but, you know, as Dr. Johnson Anderson and myself say, we're excited to, to, to nerd out and like really get into it. Cause that's really the, you know, not fun part per se, but the exciting part to see what, you know, what themes emerge. Um, and we're going to incorporate our ambassadors in that process, just in a general sense, not going like, not doing you know, what's called the grounded theory with us, which is going line by line and coding and coming up with, um, you know, codes and themes. It's, it's technical talk, but um, they will be providing us, like, based on the seven people you heard from, what struck, you know, what struck you? What did you hear? What common, you know, um, themes came out from those? So getting their initial feedback first before we even dive into the actual, you um, data, the narratives. Is this going to be, uh, even in its preliminary form, or, you know, I'm not sure how long it's going to take you. When you said, my words, that that deep dive, you said stewing in it, right? You, you can't say stew to somebody who hasn't eaten dinner. <laughs> okay, start right there. But it, just, it, it sounds like you're going to spend some time with this, and that's certainly understood by all of us to get to get this right. Yeah. Uh, the the stewing process. How long would that? How long do you anticipate that taking? And to and and when might the community safety working group at least get a a, a preliminary narrative of what you're coming up with? You will get it when the deadline says. To, I mean, we will spend as much time as we're allowed with it um, because again, you're gonna you're gonna code for different identities yeah. you're going to code across see what the themes are see what people say um so you will have it when you know you'll have it on time but it will be when you're you know when we're allowed to to provide it to you thank you very much i Dr. mean just Shabbat. just just to give you mm -hmm. an idea of you know previous work i've contracted on usually you have like you're given by contractors like six weeks just to deal with the data sets right not even the writing part but like here's six weeks you know here's 100 interviews we don't have 100 you know hopefully we'll get you know 35 to 50 but um you know it's 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 a tight 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 timeline so. understood and, and i i want to say uh, parenthetically around this to members of the community safety working group and any folks in our audience right now that uh, this is an intense amount of work for a number of people um, who are committed to doing it and getting it to the community safety working group on time. And so we also appreciate the fact that there are, every one of us has parallel lives going on at this time. And so, you know, the, the energy that's put it, being put into this is, is doubly appreciated by everybody um, because of what we all face on a day-to-day -day basis. So we, we thank you for that. I just, Ms. Farrar, I'll come to you a second. I just wanted to, and I, I'll go to you if, if, if um, Dr. Shabazz wants to defer here. No, but- uh, But what I, what I wanted to make sure we get to is the question of, of privacy that you wanted to uh, talk about at this meeting. So if I could go to Ms. Ferreira and then come back to you, is that okay? Thank yeah, you. It, it just kind of goes along with what we are talking about, mm -hmm. but I know that obviously what you all are, are gathering right now is, is, is dealing with PAR, but I also wanted to ask, like, because now since you all have been kind of, you know, working with this for a little bit, I know obviously everything's moving very quickly, which, you know, I appreciate, is the, the what about the other information, obviously, that we, we have, which is like the surveys, the uh, the two uh, forums, you know, the, the APD information that was sent to us and some of the other, obviously other, other, other um, um, you know, emails that we received from community members. How will that play into, I guess, the PAR information? Will that be kept separate? Will it, just so I have an idea. So I can, 
Go yeah, ahead. go ahead. Respond if you want. I was, <laughs> yes, I was gonna say, um, in terms of part A, I know the, the main focus is to gather the community input, right? And so from my perspective, the important piece to start with will be the data from the interviews or the focus groups, which will prioritize people's voices. From there, what we can do is find our themes after looking at the interview data and the, the discourse, so to speak, we can tr what's called triangulate, sorry, I'm getting technical again, and pull in the other data sets and see how it compares or contrasts with what the people say um, and further our analysis through that additional information. Dr. Shabazz, do you have other things to no, add? No, that's, that's what I was basically going to say. <laughs> Thank you. Did a great job. So let's just move to the, um, thank you, Ms. Ferreira. You got two thumbs up for Ms. Ferreira, one for, for uh, Dr. Lazowski and one for Dr. Shabazz. Even you didn't say anything, you got one. Uh, Dr. Shabazz, um, the privacy matter. I, I think you wanted to just ex talk about that a bit. Yeah, uh, can I uh, share screen? Sure, well, Mr. Bachman is here. I'm sure he's, you know, involved in this conversation as well. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to share here, Let's see, move this down, and all right, so we sent in an invoice, and it's our first invoice to send in, and uh, you know, so we're, we're trying to make sure we have the, the form right and format right. Um, and the comment came back from the town manager about, um, you know, having to put people's names, that type of thing, because it's an invoice to pay particularly the community ambassadors. Um, of course, we're paying the community ambassadors um, as seven gen. So it's, it's like we're being contracted, they're subcontracted. And um, because we have to invoice in order to get a uh, payment, um, I, I guess it's assumed because how the bid process works and I guess how the town uh, works is that then like chairs or I don't know, like cement, uh, we would then put this is, you know, due upon delivery. Um, people aren't chairs, they aren't cement and we're, we're uh, dealing with some very uh, delicate issues. And so I wanted to share with you how we are uh, kind of tracking our data. And this is why, of course, I just pulled this off the internet, but I just wanted to share with you why privacy is um, important. It's already been said um, by Ms. Pat and by others. Um, you know, that there's a fear of police. There's not only a fear of police, and, th and these two articles are from 2014 and 2015. So we can imagine how heightened that fear is from 2020 and the present. Um, and people are very reluctant to share their stories about uh, police interactions, even the people that we have grouped together for focus groups, many are unwilling to sit in a focus group together and share stories amongst their peers. Um, and from what I'm getting in terms of those stories, it's, it's like people are afraid folks may think ill of them in some way. Um, they may misunderstand the interaction and the outcome. Um, so folks are, are very fearful. They're also, they have hesitation about, you know, sharing information with the town because honestly, many people of color have not had um, uh, positive experiences in this town, you know, from uh, young people to grad students who are here just for, you know, uh, temporary uh, stay to folks who have lived here all their life. So um, they're very reluctant. And the way in which we got them to agree to participate was to one, uh, have some integrity and be honest with them and to assure them that their personal information would not be shared. So 
I just wanted to make that clear. And as I said, our ability to really engage with these community members uh, depends on protecting their privacy. These are some of the ways in which we are, however, recruiting and collecting their information and trying to assess, like in any hiring process, trying to assess what's your interest in this position, okay? So Katie, you're still there? Yes, I am. So uh, you and uh, Dr. Uh, Johnson Anderson created this form. You wanna talk a little bit about it? I've just taken clips from it. I haven't taken everything. And all this information has been redacted, obviously. Sure. Uh, do you have the whole thing there or what is so the... I have some of maybe three different parts. But if you just want to talk about maybe the creation of this and why mm -hmm. uh, in order to collect certain pieces of information. Sure thing. So we, you know, as it's been asked, we've been looking, you know, during the recruitment process, we were looking for a diverse set of uh, people who identify as BIPOC or AAPI um, to make sure we had representation and access to those affinity groups, if you will. Um, we're not asking the ambassador of a particular identity to only reach out to that particular affinity group, however. You know, we imagine that people's outreach is going to be diverse and we're not requiring that they stick to like only AAPI identifying people if they themselves identify as AAPI. Um, but we did ask um, for them to identify themselves racially, um, ethnically, what languages they speak. I don't know if there's other, if you wanna advance slides or whatnot. Um, so that we could contact them. We asked them for their email. Um, gender pronouns. Yeah, so, race. go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say pretty, pretty basic uh, demographic information. Um, you know, questions about what is it that, the, why do they wanna do this work? Um, are you an Amherst resident? We are limiting, you know, there's some people who are, who have stories, but you know, they're not in Amherst per se. So we're not obviously interested in, if they're not interactions with the APD specifically. Um, and then we asked them to commit to, you know, the four sessions that we had already scheduled um, to make sure that they could be available. And also, you know, this particular week from this date to this date to make sure that they could do their community outreach. So it was much based on availability and, um, if they um, matched a particular identity that we were looking to make sure we have representation from. And then you also, yeah, so this, the, um, let's see, there was a statement of interest, right? That mm -hmm. you also asked, yeah, what's been your own experience with town police? So they share that mm -hmm. as well. And also the form did the explanation um, was such that it explained the intensity of, of the work, right? It's a short amount of time, but it's time consuming, which they're, you know, realizing at this point, <laughs> if they haven't already. <laughs> yeah. Any questions about this form before I go on? Let's okay. see, look at it. Don't see any hands. I'm on a different screen right now. Hang on. The other thing I want to mention is that um, the majority, you know, I would even say, I would imagine just based on what I know thus far, the majority will be people who identify as, as BIPOC or AAPI. Um, I believe there are a few people who identify as white, but um, represent other groups such as people with mental health or a uh, houseless population. Right. Mm -hmm. So we do have, I think, um, Ms. Ferreira, you had asked about class diversity. Um, that is represented within uh, not only the ambassadors, but within the folks who are being interviewed. 
And also like age diversity too, yes. and ambassadors also. What did, what was the last one? I'm sorry. No, age. I'm age diversity and the ambassadors. Oh they, yes, yes, okay. most definitely. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to share here, um, we ended up recruiting six instead of five because we were trying to assure um, some language diversity, um, ethnic diversity, um, and we ended up including uh, a six person to assure that. And so we've labeled them here just for you to see. These represent six different individuals working with us. Okay, any uh, questions with that? Other than that, I'm going to go on to um, show you the, the work schedule that basically Katie and, and uh, Dr. Johnson Anderson. <laughs> Before you get into to. the work schedule, yes. I want to see if um, I, I know Mr. Bachman. Oh, you got your hand up. I was going to go on. Your, okay, uh, I yeah, can't Mr. see. Bachman. Yeah, because I have the screen up. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, um, when, so when the accounting gets an invoice, it compares it to the contract. And so there are two things that popped up on this one was the documentation and they asked for names and addresses, but Dr. Shabazz says that doesn't make any sense. And I totally understand why. Okay. Um, but that last screenshot you had would yes. be totally, that would, that would suffice, I think, to so, show six ambassadors hired. Cause it's, we just have to document that there are six ambassadors hired basically. So if right. we could, if you could send me, send me a shot of that, that should suffice for that. And the other point being that the contract did call for five and not six. And so right. this is a bigger part of your contract is going to go to this, which I totally understand why you would want to do that. But just uh, be aware that this means that you're not going to have funds for something else down the road that you've already budgeted for. Right. No, absolutely. We're keeping uh, account of that. Yep. So if um, you can send me this <laughs> screenshot, that would be ideal. Yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. So then maybe... I don't yes. have to talk about this, but if you're interested, I don't know, Katie, do you want to talk about your, your furious work schedule here? Is this even, can folks even see that? Um, it's a little it's, small. Yeah, yeah, it's confusing if you don't speak the language, but this is just, um, <laughs> and I don't speak this language, <laughs> although I'm multilingual. Um, this is a the analytics from a particular Zoom meeting that was held, or maybe Yes. Two, although I don't know if Terry no, this, separated that. Yeah, this is workshop two uh, as it was given to me, but I okay. put it as workshop one because, yeah, I don't speak the language. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, we have redacted it so that only my name, Terry's name, Dr. Johnson Anderson's name, you know, those are disclosed, but the other names are not. And from what I understand, it's like, people getting on, I, I'm not quite sure actually how to. So it. it's, Maybe it's actually the minutes, the minutes for um, where people are on the Zoom. So you could see um, that I think you all started at seven or thereabouts um, and you continued the Zoom uh, until 920 right here on the 24th. Mm -hmm. That's basically the important information with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it continues. So just wanted to, I guess, give proof to um, what we've been doing. And um, we have our own Zoom account specifically to ensure people's privacy. You know, we all um, work at uh, other places that that have uh you know <clears throat> zoom accounts and we didn't want that to be an issue where um folks information would show up in in some way so we we purchased a zoom account to again assure people's protection okay thank you dr shabazz uh, dr lazowski uh other comments or questions from our working group. Ms. Pat. I'm just excited about, you know, how creative they are, that they can get a private Zoom account to ensure people's um, 
confidentiality. How lucky are we in MS to have this type of uh, experts and resources? Thank you, seven generation. Same, CSWG. I have to give all the credit to Terry Mullen <laughs> because Terry has been running the, the whole technical piece and um, just awesome person. And our, I, I want to give credit to the community members who are out there sharing their stories. Um, you know, it's, it's a hard topic for a lot of folks. So to, to share good experiences, poor experiences, whatnot, that takes a lot of courage. And um, I'm grateful that they're willing to step up and that our community ambassadors are uh, willing to collect those stories. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I just want to echo, you know, what everyone is saying. Thank you so much for, you know, uh, get, gathering all this very important information and making people feel comfortable enough to, to share this because it's just, you know, really difficult, like you all have said. And I totally agree. I mean, it has to stay private. You know, if we can't keep their information confidential in terms of that type of situation, that then the fires out and everything, you know, we won't be able to get the, the real information that we're trying to get, you know. And, and I know that people are afraid and they're afraid of retaliation, so... We want to make them as comfortable as possible. Yes, uh, Dr. Wazowski. I just also want to add that we have been, again, intentional to um, make sure that we have a system in place in the event that the process is triggering for folks when they interview or after they interview and they're triggered by their memory or, or whatnot, the experience of the data collection process. So we have put into place um, and hired uh, a counselor who I also identifies as BIPOC to be on call for um, the duration of, you know, the data collection period as well mm -hmm. as, you know, a week after or so. So that's a resource that people can reach out to because again, the participants are always number one in uh, qualitative research. Oh, wow. That's, that's good. And, and I'm thinking down the line at, at some point as, as this work begins to accelerate a, uh, a little bit more, not only with the community safety working group, but with the uh, consultant group that we're connected to that we're, we're going to have to come to a, a place where we say something publicly about our work. Uh, I, we don't want our work to disappear. We certainly have reports that we have to, to send out, but we also want to be very transparent with our community because while all this work is going on, not everybody knows all this work is going on. So how do we, you know, how, just thinking forward a little bit, at some point I'd like to bring this up with Community Safety Working Group and also the clubs, when can we ar ar articulate our stance at any particular point right now to show the community that we're work working and moving forward? And I'm building on some comments I heard last time that um, we met that, uh, you know, too often we, we, we do something and then it kind of falls off the page. But I think if we keep, keep it in everyone's eyesight and mind sight, um, whatever we're doing, it, it has it gets the attention of our community, and I think they see our strategic intent and in what we're trying to do. So, just saying this, I'm foregrounding an opportunity to talk about this with not only within the group, uh, but also with you, uh, Dr. Shabazz, um, Dr. Lazowski, and and others on your team, to say when when we might collectively present something to our community as a more broader communication in the media that says, hey, okay, this is moving forward. There's a lot of people involved in this and it's not just this thing happening on the sideline that nobody knows about. So I saying that with all due appreciation to everything that you're doing and everybody else who's doing. So. Absolutely. Um, I think that will be important. I mean, that's what this work is about, so. Uh, inviting the community in, presenting to them, making sure they know about the meeting uh, when it's presented is going to be really important. Mm -hmm. I, that, it's a visibility thing for me yeah. at, at, the, at this point. And um, how, how and when we do it is, is I guess, is important. So, so uh, let me just I'm gonna circle back, Dr. Bachman. I mean, you could be Dr. Bachman. I never call you Mr. Bachman. Paul. Whatever, <laughs> are, are we okay 
with the, the questions you and Dr. Shabazz said about confidentiality and the contractual stuff, is, or is that something? Yeah, so no, I think I think that's that screenshot, the second to last yeah. screenshot, was would would suffice to meet okay. the needs of the the accounting department. We can process that quickly. Great. We'll, so we'll send that, that on tomorrow. No mm -hmm. worries. Um, one uh, more thing, Terry. I think sent you all uh, an email about the areas that we're working on on Part B. Did you all have any questions about that? Should I bring that up on the screen? Um, I would suggest you, this would be a good time to bring it up. I, I personally don't have any questions. I think there may be some questions from uh, members of our, our group, but I, I don't want to preempt that by moving forward. So uh, Terry had um, other work tonight, so uh, sent this on ahead. I appreciate that. Um, it looks like the police review boards, Terry is pinpointing. Um, I'm also working with Terry on, on this part. Um, alternative responder models we're working on, youth services, and then peer specialist models. See ya. I guess that doesn't make it any more visible, does it? <laughs> but that's what we're doing. Depends on your age. <laughs> I wear my bifocals all mm. the time. <laughs> let me let me stretch this shrink the screen back here. Um, let let me let me go to to our working group. Um, see if there are any any comments, questions, curiosities about this. I know it's appreciation for um, where you were going, Dr. Shabazz, with looking at the municipalities, et cetera. And uh, just to say, uh, and I do see you, Ms. Ferreira, I'll just, if you don't mind, just a second. I, I, I do want to say that we, we have been doing a lot of work prior to your engagement. And we are talking about uh, uh, community responder uh, alternative practices. Great. So, uh, like that conversation is coming up soon in, in our discussion, but because we didn't get too far with it, but it's an important feature of ours. So, um, just just add that as background. But I know Ms. Ferreira, you had a, a question, and then I think Ms. Bowman, you had your your hand up as well. You can go after Ms. Ferreira. Uh, well, I was just quickly. I I don't think I saw that email from. Terry, so if maybe if you all could share it um, with us. I just wanted to have it. So we sent it, yeah, we sent it to uh, Mr. Wiley and Ms. Owen because of the, um, I don't know if we send it to the CSWG email, does it go to everybody? Yeah, it goes to all of us. But I mean, okay. you can send it to, 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 to Mr. Wiley too. I was just saying if we can, Maybe, Mr. Wiley, you can forward it to us or whatever. I just want to have a copy of it. Yeah, no, the I, I'm just... The best way, if I may okay. say, the best way to do that is to, because the, the emails are voluminous. On, I don't know about Ms. Ms. Owen, but um, if um, they are always CC'd to um, Ms. Moiston. Okay, so send it to... Yeah. Miss Moiston, and then she'll send it to everyone. Sure, you can CC, you know, me if you'd like, but I, I think it's important that Miss Moiston gives because she will quickly turn that around as something that needs to be shared with the entire group. Okay. Um, All right, so we'll we'll do that, um, and hopefully, folks will get it a bit quicker. Like I said, Terry wasn't able to be at the meeting tonight. Um, so this is from the last conversation that we had about moving from the, uh, the uh, you know, the municipalities as the comparative model, because then that limits um, what we're looking at in terms of services. And it seems that the CSWG is more interested in uh, different services and different programs 
that are out there. Certainly they are in different municipalities, different cities and towns, but we can begin to look at them, particularly Terry has been really effective at looking at the data um, pertaining to these models, uh, these alternative models, these services, et cetera, and um, seeing like, for instance, how effective they are, not just in the community, but with BIPOC folks in that community? Do they have an adverse effect with BIPOC folks in that community? So Terry has been going through um, the, the research related to that. Um, particularly, like I said, we, we wanted to pinpoint which services and programs within a two months time to look at. We are aware at uh, particularly the CAHOOTS one that you all have been looking at and a couple of others. So as we're doing our research, we're keeping in mind that you've already sent us a bunch of information on that and that you, you all have done a lot of research on that. And so our plan is to incorporate it into the draft and the final report as, as a comparison, but not to necessarily go so far in depth about it because you all have done the research on it. Um, you know, we, we want to point out things that we have may maybe found that are different from what uh, you all have found, but that's what we're keeping in mind. Uh, that certain ones you all have certainly um, done a lot on already. We just, what we're saying, we don't want to repeat <laughs> the work that you've done, I guess, but include it. Yeah, just looking back and actually, you know, I, I was referring, when I, my comments, I was referring to something else that, that was sent by, by, by Terry. It was a municipality summary. That's the one I was referring to. This one, this okay. document here, I just went and searched it because I had not really seen this. Oh, okay. So the municipality one was from last week. Right, yeah. I didn't see this one and I just actually found it in my junk mail. Oh, sorry, okay. Because it didn't recognize, it's a filter I've got to change, but I didn't recognize the, <laughs> the um, the address. Okay. All right. Not, so we'll, not a big we'll, deal, but I'm saying, yeah. you, you know, what, what I think, you know, if it, and I, what I'm learning little by little as we go forward too, and I've, I asked uh, Ms. Moisten this question on another matter, is that these, these exchanges that we have, if they come between us, that she be the sort of the grounding point in this as well and that she also be part of in in the loop uh for record keeping um protocols things like that we can still have a conversation but we have to keep you know keep keep the town in the loop yep for public record no problem for public record yeah mr vernon jones And then, wait a minute, excuse me. Uh, Ms. Bowman was first. I'm sorry, Mr. Berger, that, that comment went longer than, than before. Sorry, Ms. Bowman, welcome. Thank you, your turn. All right, thank you. Um, I just had, I just wanted to make a comment because since our last meeting, I found out like, um, so like one of, the, one of the things that was brought up was a Cambridge, um, like that Cambridge has a task force that, that um, and they've had a task force that's supposed to work towards, um, oh, I can't even remember what it was, like how it was worded, but basically to work towards um, holding police officers accountable. I just wanted to point out that there's nobody on the task force last I heard. And this was like, I would talk to someone who's from that area in this past week and there's nobody, there hasn't been anybody. So I think that's something that we should just keep in the back of our minds. Um, there's gotta be a way, there's, there's a reason for that. Um, we need to figure out what that, we need, to, we need to keep that in mind as we do things that when you have a police force and you have a task force that's supposed to be holding them accountable but nobody wants to be on, there's a reason for that. 
So we need to keep like as we're moving forward, we need to really be keeping. We need to we need to keep that in our minds on how like how that sort of situation would be addressed, like whether we're looking at it as like. Um, yeah, I don't I, I don't know right now because I haven't really thought about it like, but I just wanted to put that out there because um, I think it's very important for us to consider something like that, but clearly that still puts people, people feel still that they're at risk. For Ab absolutely, Tashina. Um, just to speak to that real quickly in terms of the, the research and what the re research has shown is that when you have task force commissions, those types of things, and they have um, no subpoena power, um, then, your citizenry figure out fairly quickly that it is not a good use of their time to uh, be on these types of organizations when it's simply checking a box. Right. So um, resident citizens are, are pretty savvy about this at this point. And I think that's what happened to Cambridge. There are other models uh, around the country that um, are revisiting the notion of commissions um, and trying to uh, kind of reset the rules, uh, renegotiate those types of rules with their municipalities to give them at least subpoena power when it comes to bad actors within the yeah. uh, police force. That's very good to know. Thank you. That's all. I, that's all. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Thank you, uh, Dr. Shabazz. Uh, Mr. Pern Jones? Yeah, I'll just comment in terms of these four program areas. I think it's an excellent list. Um, you know, I think you're totally on target. Uh, and I assume this is being taken care of, but since it wasn't mentioned, uh, just to say that with regard to the alternative community responder programs, um, I'd like to make sure that some of what you report is ones that are not contracted out to a social service agency in town, but are rather employees of the town uh, and not under the control of the police department. Uh, and if possible, I'd love to know for us to have some more information about how dispatch is handled. We've already identified that we want it possible for community members to re to contact the community responders directly. Uh, they, they may also be dispatched by 911 calls, but we want to make sure people can be contacted directly by the community. And then it would be great to know, you know, we've talked about wanting the community responders to be BIPOC, or at least in, the teams to include BIPOC members, you know, has anybody succeeded in that? Uh, if so, how's it, how did they do it? How does it work? Uh, um, and yeah, I think those were the, the two, two big uh, things I, I was hoping might, might get included if you can. Mm -hmm. okay, I'm sure that comes up amongst those uh, four different services and programs Good. as well. Uh, Dr. Lazowski and then um, uh, Ms. Owen. I just want to thank you all. I'm going to head out, but wanted to thank you before I, I do so. So thank you all for your ongoing support on this initiative. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your work. Thanks, Katie. Oh, it's my pleasure. Ms. Owen. I was just going to say that the list looks great. I'm glad that Youth Services is in there. And I was going to say that um, she had her hand up. Who? Um, Dr. Lazowski, but you already called her. I just saw it in like- yeah. the oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, does someone else have a hand up? I'm watching a bunch of different screens here and a couple of down screens. So it's uh, Ms. Ms. Pat, thank you. So, yeah, you know, the list looks fantastic. Thank you very much. I was, um, last week I would have, if you had presented this last week, I would have said, would you guys be willing to compare social services? But it seems like, at least for me, the issues I, I would like CSWG to uh, work on is already being handled by the town manager, meaning the um, housing. 
uh, um, homelessness. I <clears> think <throat> if I get it correctly, Mr. Buckman, this is something you're looking into, correct? On housing? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so um, I, it's not a mute issue for us, I think. I could be wrong. So um, mm -hmm. that's what I wanted to say. And thank you for wanting to do that project. I applaud you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Pat. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. Uh, also, just in add, hopefully in support of those two comments too, I think, uh, I guess I'd like to ask, as you're working forward, the things seem to be moving forward in a, in a very predictable and, and good manner and a very effective manner. Um, I'm, I'm hoping if you see or anticipate any uh, pitfalls that might be coming our way or any um, any obstacles that we might want to be thinking about collectively to try to, to overcome that, that we, we bring that to the group as well. Um, because we, we have to anticipate a lot, as you know, uh, what might happen next. And I, I think we're benchmarking our way along the, this path at, with, with your, uh, you know, very informative updates, certainly, um, but I, I want us also to be, to be able to anticipate um, the kinds of things that may, may throw a sort of a, a stick in the spokes here as we're riding our bicycle down the street and um, that we can be able to talk about that in, in advance of that happening. So uh, just putting that out there. And I know Ms. Pat, you had your hand up. I, wanted... um, I don't mean to put additional work on um, seven Jen, I was wondering if it's at all possible for you guys to research with uh, other services like um, having a, a diversity inclusion, whatever it is called, diversity equity inclusion um, program in other places to see how effectively that is working. It's one of the um, Areas that CSWG um, identified, but you know, I don't mean to put more work for you guys, but uh, it's an issue that personally I'm very passionate about, and I'm hoping that you know, time of harvest will implement. Keep my fingers crossed. <laughs> Absolutely, I can only speak to what we've, you know, what what we've been hired and negotiated to do because I think we need to keep in mind, you know, you have two months to try to get some substantive data to tell the story of the need, right? So, um, you know, in doing that, I think there should be some further advocacy work, however uh, folks within the community and the CSWG would like to make that happen on diversity, inclusion, and equity. Um, doesn't have to be my company, like I always say, but it could be someone else. But this town, um, I think, would benefit, as, as many towns, but particularly this, this community would benefit from uh, a group that has uh, experience in working with, um, you know, the administration, uh, staff uh, within the town, um, you know, at all levels on uh, ways to be more diverse, to be more inclusive, and to have equity, which is always the really challenging part of D, uh, I, and E work, right? The equity part. So, um, you know, I, I think we can make, we'll be able to make some conclusions as a CSWG, as, as a community, after this this research, but um, it could really benefit from uh, a kind of analysis of where do we go next, right? Now that we now that we we have this information, what do we do with it, and where do we go next? And that's where most municipalities um, that they have it that is their end goal when they have this type of work done. You can look at Boston, you could look at Springfield, you could look at you know, uh, lots of different communities uh, around here that after they um, have this, this data and these reports, it's like, well, now let's make a plan to reach some goal 
you know, that, that you have in mind. Um, so I agree, but that would be down the road, I, I would think. I don't One know. thing in addition to what Ms. Ms. Pat is saying, and I'll go to you, Mr. Bernard Jones in a second, um, is that um, if you notice where we're getting input from, you know, it's coming from a lot of different places. People have sort of overlapping interests in this work. There are reparations for, for Amherst. There's defund 413. The League of Women Voters is, is, is investigating a lot of different areas. We have, um, uh, you know, our, our human rights initiatives and, you know, our, what is the, the thing at the town, <laughs> Mr. Bachman, what's it called, Ms. Moyston? There's a core equity. Yeah, so I, I, I'm just saying this out loud because there are a lot of folks who are invested in this work around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we should pay attention to it in terms of how it impacts our work because we are, it's a very systemic kind of thing we're dealing with. Um, I'm just gonna take a moment, if, if I may, to highlight someone I, I know quite well, and he'd be the first to say it's not a perfect science, but Dr. Jeffrey Canada, who uh, worked in Harlem, Harlem Children's Zone, uh, to bring about change within a particular neighborhood and it wasn't about just one entity in that neighborhood. It was a large area, but he says, in order, what, order for the entire neighborhood to improve or that area to improve, it's education, it's policing, it's the churches, it's the social services, it's the, it's the uh, mental health, it's the health services, it's all of that. And if it doesn't all rise together, then you're going to leave pe people and, and, and services out. So I think we, we've got to stay focused in terms of what our, our charge is. We're, we're dealing with Amherst Police Department and public safety, and especially as it focuses on BIPOC people, but it's not divorced from, from education. It's not necessarily divorced from mental health and health-related issues, for example. Um, so just saying that, that we're not this on this island. And I think whatever we do, um, we should pay attention to what other people are doing so that we're not, all, we're not duplicating work or duplicating research or duplicating these kinds of things that we're, we're kind of on a, on a path that's uh, a, a collective path in a way while we, while we keep our own, um, our, our own focus in terms of our purpose and, and our charge. Just, just, I want to just put that out there as to be thinking about it in the background. So, Mr. Vernon Jones? Yeah, um, I wanted to ask CDES WG, do we have a mechanism for seeing that 7Gen continues to get information about input we get from the community? Um, I was just thinking about, you know, Vince O'Connor wrote to us in the last week uh, suggesting the possibility of um, basically undoing and then totally recreating the police department as well as the civilian responders uh, and sent us copies of the police contracts. And um, Dr. Shabazz, I wanted to check, does your group anticipate reviewing the police contracts at all to see how it might, uh, whether or not it, those contracts are an obstacle to any recommendations you might make uh, or is, or do we need to find some other way to get those analyzed? So we hadn't planned on it, but uh, now that Vince O'Connor, I think Jennifer, you've been sending us information from the meeting, I believe. So we've been- Yeah, I sent them the email that I sent that you guys, yeah. I CC'd them on that. Good. Yeah. Good. So Jennifer has been doing a, a good job at sending us that. And she sent the meeting from last week as well. Um, so this is like new information and yeah. on the part B side where Terry and I are uh, over that, it's Terry and I did consider like looking at it to, to incorporate it. How much it will be incorporated, um, we'll see. I mean, there is, there's a critique that we, um, 
we are looking at mm -hmm. within all police departments regarding um, the union, regarding their contracts, and how much um, a citizen commissions or, or task force or review boards, I mean, they're called different things, how much can they be a part of making decisions, right, uh, in, in terms of, of those contracts with the police. So that we are including, Good. you know, in terms of the commission work. Mm -hmm. um, but <clears throat> now since it's been brought to our attention, most, you know, we'll, we'll look at it. But I'm saying it's part of a, a larger, uh, a larger part of the looking at commissions in general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. For sure, for sure. Uh, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, and uh, you know, once you mentioned that, uh, Dr. Chavez, I, I am like interested in that in terms of like the oversight uh, committees, because I've looked at some of them. Um, and as uh, Ms. Bowman, as Tashina had said earlier, some of them either they don't have people on it or they only have like one person on it. Um, so we want to know what's going on with that. And also, I want to look at not just the traditional oversight boards. There's a lot of oversight boards that are very traditional. I'm sure that that has evolved because some of them have been in place. Like even the one in Springfield, it's been in place for years, but I don't see a lot changing there. You see what I'm saying? So very traditional. So again, I, and I used that last week, like outside the, you know, out of the box kind of thinking in, in terms of that, because I don't want some of the same old, same old that, that has been in place because it hasn't worked. You know, right. so what else is out there that possibly is working and is, you know, innovative, is new, um, and is bringing about some actual addressing some of these issues, and has the power to do it. Has the power to do it because a lot of them don't have the power. They don't have the power at all, and that's why they're afraid. That's why there's no one on there. Yeah. So there's there's one in uh, San Diego that we're looking at, and um, you might subscribe to their newsletter, San Diego, San Diegans for, for Racial Justice, I think it's called. Um, and they put through, um, I think a city ordinance or something having to do with creation of a commission. So, so they actually uh, put it on the ballot and, and voted uh, to empower this group. So there are some interesting models out there. That's one we're looking at. Um, and I think we mentioned the one in Oakland, even though it seems very far out of, you know, what an Amherst is, they actually are, are one of the more uh, empowered ones having to do with the residents and citizens. Not perfect, but they are. I miss Pat. So I'm a number woman. I like numbers. And I did actually look into um, the town budget. Obviously, everybody knows that the APD budget is like out of whack, even with their overtime. I was wondering, um, and this is piling more work to seven gen, to uh, like, you know, compared to other places um, where they're getting money to implement their new alternative uh, <clears throat> public safety. I say that because of <clears throat> last week, um, the town manager told us that we're quarter million um, in deficit. I believe I was listening to one of the council's um, meeting or I, I stumbled into something on, on the website, whatever, but um, there is something that is called free cash, like extra money that the town has, which is more than $4 million. So, um, you know, things like that. I'm just curious what other municipalities are doing to pay for public, uh, alternative public safety, but um, I stand to be corrected. Uh, <laughs> Town manager, if that's incorrect, but my understanding is that we have like extra money set aside somewhere. Is that savings money or I don't know? Uh, Mr. Bachman, I think that's a question directed clearly to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you wouldn't mind, sure. if you want to take a stab at that one. Sure. Um, Please. 
Yes. Um, so there's two sources of funds. Typically, one is this town stabilization fund, which is money that's set aside purposely by the town, which is in essence a savings account. And at the end of every year, um, there is what's called free cash. And the thing that people say is ain't free and it ain't cash. It's it's a sum of what has been turned. The Department of Revenue certifies how much money was turned back from budgets that did not get spent plus revenue that came in that was above what was projected. And that creates a sum of money that changes from year to year. It's not a savings account or anything, but funds can be appropriated out of that um, uh, for special, special needs or something like that. But it, typically what the town does is it creates a budget every year and out of that budget, based on how, it's, uh, how we allocate all the revenue, the school gets some, the library gets some, the town gets some, and we cover all the expenses and it all built out of that budget, so. So I guess my, let me make myself much clearer. I guess my question is for 2021 fiscal year that will be ending in June, mm -hmm. if indeed we have more than $4 million free cash, could we use that money that was certified by, you know, um, by the, by the government, by the, yeah, to spend that some of the money or all of the money for alternative public uh, safety services that CSWG can, uh, is recommend, are recommending. Is it possible? I think the answer is yes. Okay, that's what I, yeah, okay. And uh, one other glaring thing that I noticed was um, for social services for this current fiscal year was actually cut why the APD budget went up. So I just want to put that out. So that tells us what, you know, where our priority lies. I, I do know that, you know, we have pandemic and we shut down and perhaps we, you know, we didn't, have, we didn't need much of social services, but to have the lowest, uh, not the lowest, the most vulnerable population in our town, having the services that uh, cut, you know, you know, says a lot about um, the people that we elected, you know, to manage our, our budget. That's all I can say. I don't want to say too much, not to get myself into trouble. <laughs> well, as, long as, you don't, as long as you don't give uh, Dr. Shabazz more people... work beyond her contract, I think you're okay. <laughs> But uh, I'm joking. I can say whatever I want. I can speak my mind. But absolutely, yeah, I and love numbers, and I'm looking at these numbers. I'm like, oh boy. Okay. Well, here's I'll something to, to, to think about in, in, in support of what you're saying, uh, Ms. Pat. I, I think we're, we, you know, let's let's roll back for a minute. We're we're trying to this group, this working group is has a tremendous charge and responsibility in front of it. And the, this charge basically is to rec make recommendations that are substantially different and potentially substantially more impactful and effective around both the police department and the whole delivery of safety services in the town of Amherst. We're not just talking about making some number shifts. We're not, we're not just talking about making some, uh, you know, scripting some things out in terms of programs and having things change. We're talking about a mindset shift in this town. And I, and I think we have to remember that in, in close proximity to what we're doing as a group. Um, this, this town has been functioning in a certain way for a long time. And to become, to, to, to get out of some of the trenches that we're in to improve services is, is not just simply changing a program or a program, but also changing a mindset. And I think we have to be very clear about when we look at creating our budgets, what are our priorities? And this is known to all of us. If you wanna know what the priorities are, you follow the money, okay? You follow the money. And I wanna say this too, and at the same time saying that we have to be as a, commu a community work service working group, more educated around how town government works because all of us, including myself, don't know all the nuances of town government. And sometimes those, 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 those hands are tied. 
because of certain particular things that we're doing. However, if we're talking about changing things, change like that and change in mindset is not gonna come within a moment. It, it's gonna come with setting a firm, firm sound foundation, I think, certainly with what we're doing right now, but also getting some sustainability behind it so that it doesn't disappear. And I think uh, Ms. Bowman mentioned this last week, uh, it, and I'm, I don't wanna speak for you, Ms. Bowman, but I, I, I support what you're saying because there's a lot of emotionality around that because I think how many, you know, we, we can't tiptoe around this, but we have to be purposeful and deliberate around it. We, 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 we can't fall in love with the problem we have to address the problem. And I think one of the things we're, we're talking about doing is, you know, having, you know, Dr. Shabazz and seven generations bring us information we need. We're talking about us as a group uh, meeting our charge by being able to craft recommendations that are gonna change the mindset of the town, if you feel what I'm saying, and begin to, to take the actions that are going to stimulate some activity. I, I, I don't want us to get stuck in in the moment uh, of the, the the pain of the moment i want us to get unstuck in a way that says hey look let's put some things out there let's state what we want let's state what we need let's get the research behind it and let's craft something that's going to make a difference for this town otherwise it's going to go back to some other point we were in history where we said hey this was great we did our report on in june and guess what we forgot about it at some point. I, I just would hate to see that happen for this group after all the work we put into it. So uh, our responsibility, I'm just reminding us of our charge, is to come up with recommendations. And the way to do that is to be able to craft coherent um, and sustainable statements about what it is we need to do and how we need to monitor it going forward, period. I, I, we, we have to kind of stay with it. Uh, we, we, we can't dig digress from this right now, you know, and I think that's where, you know, Dr. Shabazz and her group is, is leading us to. So we have to just stay uh, on point, if you will, and understand how, understand how our government works, whether we agree with it or not, understand how it works and begin to work with, within it to make the changes that will be sustainable over time. You follow me? I, I that's, that, that's just my, my sense of it. Um, and I, I, I would hate to see us not do that and, and lose, lose focus of where our, our vision is going as, as, as a group. So, wow. So let me, let me just, let me pass the offering plate around the church right now to see if anybody wants to donate to me what I just said, but if you don't, that's cool too. <laughs> anyway, that that's my the comment, Miss Ferrer. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I definitely hear that. You know, I mean, obviously we have to keep this moving forward. Um, but yet, and still, I guess what I'm saying is that we have to make sure because, like you said, I mean, this this charge that we were given is very important. It's critical, right? When critical times, you know, the George Floyd trial is going on right now, right? In terms of you know what happened to that man, you know that he was murdered and the fact that these killings and murders are continuing it's not anything that you know for me it's, it's more so about just stop the hate you know what i'm saying just stop the hate against bipoc aapi anyone that 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 falls within you know the press group you see what i'm saying and it's just like and so that's that's a reality that's happening so for me though i want to have all the information right because i don't want to shortchange this town you know i don't want to shortchange the BIPOC and the AAPI and all the communities that are impacted, you know, on a daily basis by what occurs, you know, you know, with the police and 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 all those that are in power. So I want to know what is actually what we're actually able to do. I need to have the information, right? I can't function, and I can only speak for myself, right? I can't function blind because you know my thing is I'm going to be very true. To, to what the charge is and what I was given, and I'm gonna take it to heart, right? So when I do that, I need to make sure that, you know, 
I can be that. And like what Miss Miss Pat said, right? That she's going to be honest. I need to be honest too in terms of these things. And so we need to know. And I appreciate Miss Pat bringing up the money, right? And really breaking it down in terms of, you know, because we need to know those things so that we're able to do good, honest work. I'm not, I don't want to shortchange these folks. You know, we've been dealing with too much for too long. And this is a time for us to do something, something different, you know? So, um, so I hear it, but I'm just kind of like, you know, we need to have the information and we, we need to be able to, to, to make a change and, and, and do something different, you know, be able to do that. I'm not here to do the same old, same old. I'm not. I don't think any of us are. And uh, if, if there are, are no other comments, I do want to respect the time um, that you've given us, uh, Dr. Shabazz um, and um, uh, Dr. Lozowski has left already. But to, to thank you for what thank you're you. doing. And we, we look forward to next week's update. Certainly as a, as a, as point person with uh, both uh, uh, Ms. Owen and I are sharing, I'm, I'm the lead on it, of course. And if, if I have too many grandkids to deal with what I'm dealing with right now, but she'll take over. But it's, um, we appreciate and respect and honor what you're trying to do. And we want Same. to thank you for what you're, you're bringing to us. Um, it, it's, it's been informative. It's been great. I, I want to re re release you from this meeting if you uh, need to go. Um, and uh, if you want to stay, you're absolutely welcome to stay. Thank you so much for your work. And I uh, look forward to talking with you all again next week. I'll be sending you a new invoice, uh, Mr. Bockelman. Okay. Take care. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. A any um, post comments to, to that discussion before we move to the next, uh, next issue? Are you raising your hand, Ms. Ms. Moyston? Or are you just waving? To Mr. Bachman. I think, uh, no, I think I was fiddling okay. a little bit, Mr. but I will Jones? say, yeah, well, yeah. Well, but I will say oh, okay. that, I'm sorry. Go ahead. that the process of, I mean, I've only worked or seen the work of consultants in different manners, but the process that we're going through over this is, is so lifetime learning and, and to see how it unravels. So I'm so incredibly thankful for being able to be part of this group. You guys already know where my heart is at. And, and to walk through these steps with you guys. So that was that. Welcome. Uh, I saw a hand on the right side of my screen. Ms. Pat, it was you. It was you. Thank you everybody for uh, your comments. Um, very meaningful. Actually, what I want to say is, you know, in our next um, item, I was wondering if we can rearrange this so that we can get to items that we didn't get to last week, like planning for the meeting with Chief Livingstone, you know, discussing letter to council, and then perhaps do Chris chat the last, like move it over. I'm not trying to do your job, Mr. Wiley, but I'm, I'm just concerned that if we start- Lord knows, Chris, I wish you would do my job. If we start with Chris, we won't get to other items tonight. Ms. Pat, Ms. Pat, you want to you want to do my job? No way. <laughs> just to please, you can just. You're, do you're doing job, a okay? great job. <laughs> <laughs> and I love my people. A great job. Yeah. Well, let me let me just say this, uh, and um, and you like numbers, so maybe you'll appreciate this. There are uh, only nineteen. Are you trying to quiz me? I'm not responding. <laughs> 19 minutes left in this meeting and last yeah. week we were we were overdrawn because we had a lot of important issues to touch on. I think we got a lot done. Uh, if, if I may, let me just let me say this and I could literally take this to a, a different level altogether with respect to police inviting Chief Livingstone. I would like for us to if we can within two minutes or three minutes or four minutes, decide when we'd like for him to come. We can figure out the, the, how that we construct that. But I, 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 I wanna push this because I think he's a person 
And that's a department that's at the focus of all of this work. And we have yet to hear from him yet. And I think we may have some information to gain from him beyond our question. So all I'm, I'm asking if the, if the committee, if it, the working group can maybe think about when might we invite him? Uh, he's open to come anytime we want to invite him. I want it to be an informative and uh, an engaging conversation with him that might inform our work. That's it, Ms. Ms. Moyston. I just need to be excused for a moment. I just, last time I stepped away, like you guys called on me for the first time out of like an hour and a half. So I just don't want that to happen again. <laughs> so I will be right back. We will call on you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so any, re re any reactions to, 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 to my offering? I mean, yes, Ms. Pat. Is next week too soon for people? I'm I, flexible. I I don't know. I I'm just I'm I'm putting that out there because it's been on the agenda for two consecutive meetings, and um, I don't want to interfere with the the path and the process we're going on right now. So that's why I'm I'm bringing it up for discussion, Ms. Ferreira. Yeah, I guess. Well, I mean, we went into a whole discussion last week, and I understand that obviously we don't have enough time to get it back into that discussion, but we do need to get back into that discussion <laughs> and discuss it. So I don't want that to be dropped. You see what I'm saying? We only got through the first part of the whole crest thing. We haven't even gotten through, the, I mean, in terms of that sheet, which goes right. into other things. So we need to discuss that. So my thing is this, right? I get it about us trying to, to bring Chief Livingstone in. But I'm just like, is it more important for us to get this conversation done before we bring them in? Or is it not important to have this conversation done and bring them in? I guess that's where I'm at. I'm not saying I have a clear answer. Understood. But my thing is, I know that I want us to have finished going through this sheet. And, you know, so I'm kind of like, I, you know, I'm feeling kind of choppy right now, I guess. It's like, we didn't finish our conversation. Now we're going to go and talk to Chief Living. I'm feeling a little bit like tugged. So, but... I don't know. What do others think? I guess. I'm, I'm feeling the, the bounciness as well, yeah. uh, um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Ms. Bowman. So, um, as you know, I left. Uh, sorry, I left at the end of the meeting. Can you take that and find out where it is? Um, so, I don't understand why right now we would be even talking to Chief Livingston because we have other things that I think are very so much more important to take care of and we're not taking care of them and I'm sorry I mean I'm not trying to be rude but I feel like there's not a real watch on how much time people are talking and I think that's really that's why we're not completing things so no I don't think we should be talking to um, Chief Livingston yet and and we need to start keeping time on time on how how long people are talking because it's almost seven thirty and I'm gonna I'm logging off at seven thirty because I have to take care of my family. Uh, Ms. Patton and Ms. Owen. I'll let Ms. Zowen go because you know I've spoken many times. <laughs> um, I think it would be I, I am kind of like in between because I don't want to just jump into the. Um, talking to the police chief without finishing the crest chart thing. I think it would be most effective if we did, if we spent next week's meeting doing the crest and then maybe the week after inviting Chief Livingstone. Thank you, Ms. Pat. So now I can go. I don't have any particular uh, preference whether it's next week or, or any other day. So gonna switch you, I think um, the crest discussion is that, you know, was very robust last week. I'm just wondering, you know, is that the most efficient way to, to discuss this? So, you know, like some people said they never read it. Some people said they didn't submit anything. And so people are on different levels of press. And so I'm not saying we shouldn't discuss, but I'm not sure if, if, if it's the best way to spend our time on the crest. I mean, we should discuss that, I don't if know. I could, if I could respond just to that and then I'll go to Ms. Ferreira. Um, let me reiterate, I, I'm not pushing 
a conversation with the chief. It, it came up early on and we keep deferring it on and on. I wanna reiterate that Chief Livingstone said he will meet with us whenever we want to meet with him. I just wanna be clear about that. So that does not have to happen next week. It doesn't have to happen the week after. If we, have other, if we determine as a group, we have other priorities, which are fine with me and certainly fine with him. Um, and we, it is, clearly we have a lot to do relative to our contract and working with the community safety, I mean, with the uh, Seven Generations Movement Collective. So if we can set that aside for a minute, I'm not pushing that as a need to meet with him or even discuss it right now. Um, I just let's keep that in the background for a second. Okay, let's get back to the, the crest piece. A lot of effort move was put into that in terms of uh, discussion, creating a grid, taking a straw poll on what's going on, receiving commentary about it. And last week, we had a conversation that took an extensive amount of time, and we only got like that far in that. So given that, let, let's, let's take the Chief Livingstone off the page for a second. Each week we're having a conversation with uh, and an update from our consultant group. That's fixed and we need that. We need to have that interaction with them. Go on. The rest of the agenda is open for us to build. And if it, if this is, if we want to really get into go into depth on this on this uh, crest chart and the feedback, I suggest we have two items next week. One, our update from our, our consultant group, and two, our um, our work on the crest. Um, the other item about the town letter, we can take a five minutes to talk about that, but uh, the folks who are working on that can continue to craft that and talk about that and how we might want to move it forward. But I, I'm looking to sh shrink this agenda in terms of topics, but increase it in terms of depth. So if the depth needs to be around our consultant group and our crest work, let, let, let's try to think about that. Comments, Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, I'm I'm fine with doing Crest next week. I do think we should see the police chief before too much longer. Uh, partly, I think his input about Crest may be relevant. I mean, we'll we'll design it the way we want it, but I think he will have information that'll be useful to us about that. Um, but let's do Crest first. And I'm not attached to our sticking with the the straw poll or the grid or anything, maybe it would be more useful at this point for each member of the group to write in, what are the key decisions you think we need to make? What are the key things you want to advocate for? Uh, and if everybody would do that work in the next few days, you know, maybe uh, Mr. Wiley, you could, you know, organize a, a way for us to have the meeting. I don't think it needs to be tied to the paperwork we had before. Um, I do have a comment to make later, though, on the, the letter to the council. Right, yeah. Uh, Ms. Ms. Ferrer. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, now I guess I do have something to say in terms of this, because, you know, I put a lot of time into filling out this, this grid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So why can't we just tell people, you know, read up, you know, if you have any other comments, submit it you know, and let's get through this grid. The grid is not just on CREST, it's on CREST, it's on APD, it's on, on, on the budget. Okay. And, it, and, it, and it goes into a whole bunch of other things. You know, I mean, it, you know, I took the time, you know what I'm saying, a couple of hours on my weekend to fill this out and to put the comments in, <laughs> you know, and then all of a sudden it's kind of like, okay, let's just throw that out and let's just throw in a couple of points. No, I mean, let, let's let's get through this. You know, we're gonna have to get through it. It's gonna, it's gonna bring up, emotions is going to bring up stuff this is the work this is the work this is it you know we got to get through this let's get this done you know like next week maybe we can say consultants you have 15 minutes because anyway they're getting a lot of data back in they're not going to have anything to really share at that point you know 15 minutes for that the rest of the time we go through this grid and we hash it out and we talk about all the different points you know because 
you know, for me, it, it, we keep on reinventing and, and, and those types of things. Uh, let's just get through it. Let's just do it. Well heard. Ms. Ms. Pat. So, so basically we're saying the same thing, but in a different way, like our approaches. I think the challenge sometimes, and I've had times when I didn't have time to read some stuff that I think is challenging for our group sometimes when we have a, I mean, I have to speak the truth. Let me speak my mind. If we're given assignments to do, and I know we all have busy lives, and if people didn't read some stuff and we start discussing it, it's just, it makes it very challenging to move conversation forward. I hear you, Ms. Ferreira, you spent weekends doing this. I spent some time too, you know, responding back, reading it as well. There are people because of their schedule or whatever, haven't even read it. And so it makes our discussion very, very challenging is my point. I'm not saying that we shouldn't discuss it, but I'm concerned like, is it the most efficient way? I would love to see, you know, our members actually respond to it so that when we're discussing, we're all almost on the same page. That's, that's the point I'm trying, I'm trying to make. I'm not saying that we shouldn't discuss it. It's not what I'm saying, but I'm just saying that there are people who haven't had time to read it and it makes group discussion very challenging. Thank you, Ms. Patton. I see Ms. Walker's hand is up. Yeah. And I wanted to recognize Ms. Walker. Thank you, Mr. Wiley. Um, I just wanted to offer, sorry, just another perspective because I uh, think it would be very important for us to continue the Crest conversation um, because I think that really gets to the brunt of our work and like the final result of our work. And we are clearly gonna need really in-depth conversation through that that may even take more than one meeting. Um, so I definitely think we should continue with that. <clears throat> Um, I didn't have time to fill out the comments on the sheet, but I did read over and have done significant thought about it and have done other um, like prompts throughout the work of this group in regards to the same thoughts and the same work. And so like I'm fully prepared to have a discussion on it, but I don't have anything written down to send you guys because I also found it really difficult to put my thoughts onto the document because a lot of what I have or my questions require feedback from the group. So like my concerns, like I want to hear feedback and like, I don't know how to put that in, onto the paper. It's easier for me in a live conversation with all of you guys to come up with a result. So like, I do like the grid in terms of, in terms of structuring the conversation just so that we can be like, this is point A, this is what we're gonna talk about now. But like if other things come up, I think that's fine for us to talk about other things because we're really trying to come up with something unique here. So I think we should just, I mean, I think it's useful, but I don't think it's necessary. Just to, in response to that, Ms. Walker, thank you. Um, we, we have uh, uh, within this group various styles of communicating clearly. And um, some of us are better you know, in the moment, you know, sharing ideas and commentary. Some of us are better in, in reflecting and writing and those kinds of things. So what I'm gonna suggest is, well, in terms of structuring the next agenda, that we, uh, I think Ms. Pat, you, you, you said this, but talk to, I'm the point person along with uh, Ms. Owen, talk to um, uh, Dr. Shabazz and say, Here's a time frame we'd like for you to report back to us to, uh, next week. Give us an update. Um, if they can give us anything in writing ahead of time, that would be great because then we'd have a chance to absorb it. But that we fix a time and then go right into the discussion of, of Crest. And, and in, in anticipating the discussion of Crest so we don't get lost in the moment like we, we did last time, it was a very important conversation, but you see, we didn't get too far. Um, I'd like to work with someone on the, uh, on, on the working group to say, could we propose a strategy for how we want to carry out that discussion so we make some progress and we don't get stuck in a rut uh, in any particular place? Because going back to the top of the meeting, the comments that said, we have to be, we have to be, I didn't actually say this, but more results oriented right this, at this moment. We have some things we have to produce. And so I certainly, as the chair, don't mind spending time 
uh, discussing and talking about this, but we have to come out with some outcomes at the next time. So th those two things I think would be the substance of our agenda for, for next week. Let, let's get this done. Let's get to have the discussion. Let's get it done. Let's get it moving forward. And, um, you know, put, put some meat on the bones of this thing that we've been working on so hard for a long time. Um, so th those, those are my suggestions. And, um, and I know we're, we're coming toward the end. I just, hold on, Ms. Ms. Bowman, I see you. I see you, don't walk away. Um, uh, I, um, I wanna get back to the comment, uh, Mr. Vernon Jones about the letter because that's another thing that's kind of backgroundish for us. So that, that's my sense that we, we, we get to this, get something moving, get something done. And um, so Ms. Bowman, I'll take your comment, please. Ms. Bowman? Never mind. I, I'm, I'm about to log off anyway, so never mind. Okay, if you, if you have something you wanted to share, you don't have a chance now, uh, feel free to, to, to email me or Ms. Mo Ms. Moisten and we'll make sure it gets, gets heard. Uh, any thoughts about what I'm proposing for next meeting? Okay, would someone like to work with me to craft a, a strategy for how to have that discussion? Just as a way to give us a foundation for the discussion. So we're not coming in blank. Don't leave it to me because it'll be a disaster. Ms. Ferreira, would you be willing to do that with Mr. Miley? I can. Thank you. On it, Mr. Wiley. She said can. She didn't say will. <laughs> There's a big difference between those two words I've noticed in my career. No, I will, I will. Be my pleasure. Thank you. Okay. I'm gonna have to have coffee with you, Ms. Ferreira, <laughs> at some point. Okay, so the two of well, us, be, we'll, we'll Zoom, put our heads Zoom together. Coffee. Nowadays is Zoom coffee. <laughs> no, I'm not Zooming coffee, okay? You have to just wear a mask and sip through it, all right? So. Thank you, Ms. Freer. We'll work on we'll work on that, and we'll you and I will just we'll have a conversation about it first, and we'll come with something. And I hope you'll trust that what we're offering you is not going to be something. I mean, in terms of time, not going to be something that we're going to go back and see if you you uh, approve of it. You want to edit it, whatever. We're going to come up with our best thinking on it. We're going to present it to you, and we're just going to yeah. go for it. Yeah. Okay. Because we don't have time to 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 do that kind of stuff at this point. So thank you, Ms. Ferrer. Um, Ms. Pat. Thank you both for volunteering to do this, Mr. Wiley and Ms. Uh, Ferreira. So can we at least tonight set a date for um, the chief to meet with us? Um, I'm not fixed to any particular date. Wait. What I'm thinking is that if we present our recommendation without APD input, I mean, our credibility will be yeah. out like exactly so mm -hmm. i i really really hope that we get them in here uh with us in you know to chat so if, if we are if we can at least set a date tonight i don't care i don't have any particular date in mind and neither do, neither does the chief and can if i can, can just roll back miss Ferrer, for a second i, I want to go back because i want to get this and we're at the end of our time already and Mr. Vernon Jones wanted to say something about the letter and I want to say something about the letter to the town too. Can we, we, we get that brief discussion or input in and then go back to you, Ms. Pat, if you don't mind? Mm -hmm. So Mr. Vernon Jones, what was your comment about the letter? Well, you know, I had new thoughts this week. Um, one is, my guess is that the town council doesn't know as much about the town's finances as the town manager does. Uh, and they're aware that we've been meeting with the time town manager right along and they're waiting to see the town manager's budget. Um, and I think partly the town council and certainly a lot of people in town are waiting to see how much defunding the police we recommend. 
you know, if defunding means transferring resources from the police department to, to social services. Um, and it seems to me that we ought to be having that discussion among ourselves rather than asking the town council to come up with money for what we uh, want to propose. Um, yes, and comments, Ms. Ferreira? Um, yeah, I get that, but I guess I would need to get more information from Mr. Barkerman because, you know, I need to find out what money we have in order to, to be able to do what we, we want to do here. I think that's why we were going to the town council was to ask them about the money situation. So if, if, the, if Mr. Bachman is saying he knows more than the town council, <laughs> then we just need to talk to Mr. Bachman. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I just need to know where's the money, <laughs> you know? Oh, Mr. Vernon Jones said that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I mean, Mr. Bachman, I'll come to you in a second. I know Ms. Walker had her hand up prior to you. Oh, no, I just wanted to say that I, I agree with Mr. Vernon Jones and now also Deborah that, that that's a, a like great new thoughts and that we should definitely follow up on that. And I'm curious to hear um, what Mr. Mm -hmm. Bachelman has to say. And here he is, Mr. Bachelman. So so I think those are really good points. I think that you're on the right track on this. Um, so the I think the community safety working group should be recommending what it thinks is the right programmatic approach to what it thinks is best for the town. And then say, go fund, town manager, here's what we think, you, here's, 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 you should go fund it. You, it's not your job to find the money, it's the town manager's job to find the money. Now I wanna make sure that there, you understand there's a distinction between what you recommend and what the town manager may recommend but you have a unique position because you will be giving a report that's outside of the budget process directly to the town council. I'm hoping that you're willing to do that. And I think that that will create this sort of dynamic within the public to create that conversation. So if you say, what I'm not gonna even speculate, but if you say something that's different than what I put in the budget, there will be a place for that conversation to happen, which leads me to a very small thing. In January, we asked for two additional months from the town council for the report and our report had been January 31. We asked for March 31. I would like, I need to ask the council on Monday uh, for an additional, I'm not sure, 30, 45 days. And I think our alignment is with the with the uh, consultant is to have everything done by April 30th. So I'm thinking Ash asking for 45 days. So you have a couple of weeks to process additional things to finalize things. Does that make sense? So I just, I wanna be on track and in sync with you when I put that forward. So I'll say ask for 45 days additionally. But I think that that will give you time once you complete your report to get on the council's agenda and say, you know, town manager asked for more than we thought or less than we thought or exactly what we thought. And here's why we think we did the work and here's what you think we think you should be thinking about. But wait, just just a quick little follow up for Mr. Bachman. So when you yep. say that um, that we have that extra 45 days. I, I know it's for the report to report to the town council, but what about for the budget? I thought you had to get the budget in by May 1st. I do. And so that's, I'm listening. And I really want you to have that conversation about the crest um, soon. So I, I think that's really the, the pivotal point for, yeah. for what, what we're developing here. Yeah. And that's why I was thinking in terms of, you know, in terms of our next week conversation, I think it'll motivate people because that's what I was going to say. It's just like Mr. Bachman needs to have, have his budget in by the 1st. So we need to have something to him by the latest, what, like the 28th? So like we have a meeting on the 28th on Wednesday. We'd have to have something to you by the 28th. So then we want to meet with the police chief. So anyway, Mr. Wiley, so that you can kind of work backwards and kind of see, okay, we have a couple more meetings. This is when we have to do blah, 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 blah. Exactly. At the top of this meeting, I remember me saying we have to be really more purposeful about what we're doing because um, we, we can get lost in very important conversation, but sometimes it's not productive in terms of where we need to go as a group. We understand the, the, the context, we understand the, the need, the urgency and everything. Let, let's work, let's put, our, put our, our energy into creating these kinds of next steps that are gonna move this process forward. So I appreciate 
and and honor what you're saying, uh, Ms. Ms. Pereira. So we'll we'll do that next meeting. I want to go back to you, Ms. Pat. I didn't didn't forget you about um, the meeting with um, uh, a proposed meeting with uh, Chief Livingstone. So you asked about the possibility of setting a date to meet with him. Um, I am open to, it, as long as it's not next week, I'm open to hear suggestions from our, our working group as I feel a responsibility to get, a, get in touch with, um, uh, with along with Mr. Bachelman, uh with Chief Livingstone to have him present here with his staff to have a conversation with us. So any suggestions on the meeting time? Not next week. Ms. Owen. Um, looking at the calendar, maybe we could meet with him the week, um, April 21st, just so we have two meeting times to talk about Crest, just in case the conversation spills over and we don't finish everything um, next week. Just a suggestion. Appreciate it. Thank you. That's that's what I'm asking for. Does does that um, align with other people's thinking, or are, do, you, do you see it sooner? Um, Miss Walker has her hand up. Yeah, I'm looking around. There it is. I just saw it on the thing. Yeah, Miss Walker. Thank you. Um, so I agree with Brianna. I think that would be a good date to set um, because I think also that it would be important for us to set some time before we meet with them to think about what exactly, like, wait, are we just gonna be asking them to do a presentation or do we have specific questions that we want to ask them? Because I think it would be helpful to come up with those questions ahead of time. Cause we do also, we do already have a bunch of answers to questions that we already sent to the police department. So like what, in addition to that, do we want to know? I think would be helpful to come up with before we meet with the police. So I think it would be smart to give ourselves two meetings before meeting with them. I have no objection to that. In fact, I'd be happy to uh, reissue uh, that there are so many people working on different things. I forgot who, was it you, Brianna, who worked with me or were you, Ms. Walker? Or somebody worked with me, Ms. Ferreira, Ms. Ferreira on, on sort of trying to set the format for the meeting. I can reissue that to folks. And if we can agree on the 21st, that's fine with me. I'm good with it. Um, if everyone else is good with it, let's let's set it. Uh, we'll 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 send out that that um, request again for feedback on the format of that meeting and the questions we might want to ask. Um, it also gives me an opportunity to talk with because uh, I know Mr. Bachman, you've been working with uh, Chief Livingstone to sort of you know choreograph how that's going to take place and what we we really want to have a conversation about. Um, and that'll be clear in the in the communication that I send out. So any any um, any objection to the twenty first? Let me put there. Okay, before I go there, Miss Miss Pat, you want to comment? Yeah, I have no objection. The date, you know, is fine with me. Um, just to be clear, so we're not sending any letter to to the town council, correct? We're not doing that. It's a mute issue now, right? We're not going to do that right okay, now. Okay, good. I think we're going to take. I didn't think we should do. Okay. Step I just back and reflect a bit. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, on advisement from the from the, the working group, yep. and um, so those of us working on the on the potential communication with the town council, we'll, we'll keep that on the sideline in, in case at some point we need to go back to it, but we'll we'll reengage that process at some point. We have, we have bigger fish to fry. Yeah, I just want to be clear. I agree that we shouldn't send them any letter. I just want us to be very clear that we're not doing that. When have you not been clear, Ms. Pat? <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Ferreira? Yeah, just to be clear too. So we'll have, so we have, you know, our meeting next week that we'll talk about the Crest Grid and then possibly even the 14th. And we meet with the police chief. Well, the 14th, I'm assuming we'll just kind of finish prepping for the meeting for the chief on the 21st too. And then we meet with the chief and then we need to get something to Mr. Bachman then by the 28th, right, Mr. Bachman? That's correct. Okay, so by the 28th. So are we all on board that that's enough time that we, we got this? 
So, Can we? <laughs> I love that question. We got this. <laughs> It depends on who the we is, um, you know, Ms. Fair. We know uh, how we gets defined. Um, Ms. Pat? Mr. Buckner, can we submit our report to you on the 29th? Too close? Mr. Bachman. So, so the, what's important to me is not so much the important as what you're actually recommending. And the more clarity I get on that, the sooner. I mean, the 28th is really late. I mean, if you know on the next week or the week after where you're headed on this, that would be very helpful. Okay. I, I think we'll have a pretty good indication of where we're going, um, certainly. And, and I want to say we, we have to be very conscious, again, of going back to a comment, to understand how, um, for all of us, to understand how, how town government works. Whether we like it or not, whether we agree with that, but to understand how it works so we know how to work within it, to, to to, to get our, 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 our needs met and, and to communicate effectively. So, you know, that, that's pretty much it. Um, are we all good? All hearts and minds at ease? Okay. Um, let's move forward then. Um, upcoming events. Any? I'm not even gonna look at you, Ms. Moyston, today. Uh, if there are no upcoming events, if you do have some, oh, Ms. Moyston, if, and if you do any of if you do have some, please um, email them to Ms. Moyston, we can communicate them to our group. So the Human Rights Commission will be celebrating their, I think it's the 15th human the Youth Hero Awards. So in the meantime, they will be shortly collecting names of youth who have done extraordinary acts of kindness. That can be anywhere from sticking up to the kid in your classroom that or virtually, I guess this year, picked on to kids who have food, um, uh, food drives on their initiatives that they create food drives initiatives on their own, what, whatever it may be. Um, but it's always a very exciting time um, to celebrate our youth. Is there a town link to that, Ms. Moyston, that, that we um, can all go on? Because I'm sure some of us know some. Yeah, there will be. I'm just, I'm just stuff. putting that in your head. We're not quite there yet, but that's, there yet. Okay. that's upcoming. Okay. And um, we usually, in the, in the next few weeks, we'll be sending out the um, notifications to, to have people um, send in nominations so I just thought I would put that in your heads and you can always reach out if you don't want to if you feel like you might lose it and just let me know who they are and then I can touch back with you when the time is appropriate to fill out the nomination form thank so you I, 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 have, Pat, yeah. I have one announcement um I believe legal women voters have a, a zoom meeting next week Thursday I'm not sure if it's next week Thursday about how to run for officers um, like Mr. Wally has said, you know, we need, you know, people need to understand how, you know, um, this town works. So I would love to see by folks run for offices, especially town council. And I'm looking into our young generation, Brianna, <laughs> Tashina, Ms. Alicia, Tashina, Tashina, run and for, yeah, run for town council. We need to replace some of, some of the folks there. So. That's my pitch. I was disappointed to not hear you mention Mr. Brennan Jones and me. <laughs> in the young um, <laughs> group. Just, you know, Pat, come on, really? Everybody, everybody. Yeah, come please. on now. Everybody. <laughs> come on, everybody. Please, Thank you. Me. Tell your friends. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Yeah, we got to raise diverse, up our youth. Oh, sorry. We need diverse committees in this yeah. town. We need to change the way this town works. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, let me go back to the now next to uh, our next meeting date, um, proposing next Wednesday, if that's still consistent and good for everybody at 5.30. Okay, we'll set that as our next date. And uh, Mr. Vernon Jones, going back to the other topics piece, I, I kind of, Circling back to where you were at the top of the meeting, I'm trying to remember what that was. Well, the only one I really want to bring up at this point is I think our credibility requires that we do at least a little outreach to the business community. Yes. I would Thank suggest you. that we not establish a subcommittee 
but that we ask one or two of our members to initiate contact, give them a little idea about what we're thinking about and invite their input. Um, I don't think we have time for them to come to a meeting and I'm not interested in a subcommittee that has to post its meetings, but I think one or two people on our group could reach out to the bid and the chamber and uh, get some input and it would, it would strengthen the credibility of our report. Do you have a, um, a particular, um, maybe sort of bank or small bank of questions you think uh, this uh, subgroup might use to reach out to? I wouldn't, I, I do, you know, here's what we're, we're thinking about an alternative community responder and we're thinking about a, an oversight board um, and we're interested in your input about your experiences with police and what your needs are and um, any, anything you'd like to say to us. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't do any more than that. Sounds good. Um, you have a comment on that, Ms. Pat? Of course, I would like to volunteer to reach out to the Chamber of Commerce. How about that? Because I have questions to ask them that I can report back <laughs> to you guys. <laughs> I was a former business owner in town, so I know the questions I can ask about alternative. I, uh, I love that idea. Uh, public safety. If you yeah, guys trust me enough to do that. I, I appreciate you doing that. Would you like some assistance in doing that? Yes, Mr. Rosben and Jones, we work very well together. <laughs> I work very well together with everybody. How about that? <laughs> well, you do miss that. I, can, I, can, I can't speak for Mr. Vernon Jones. If he wants to join you, that's fine. If, if Ms. Pat wants me, I, I've learned not to say no to Ms. Pat. This guy you guys are seeing here, he got a lot of crap at Fort River School for what? For supporting BIPOC students and families. And he's been steady all these years, still doing the work nonstop. So, Seriously. Seriously, Mr. Rose Ben Jones, he's been doing it for a long, long time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He got a lot of crap from people. Yep. In, and from me, him. too, as I worked with him. <laughs> but he, he managed to avoid that, too. So it was good to deal with it. <laughs> thank, thank you, Ms. Pat. No, yeah, he, 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 yeah, you are our said. accomplice. You're well beyond said. ally. You are accomplice. You, you risk everything to support BIPOC publicly. And I want you to blush. <laughs> I am. <laughs> you are an unsung hero. Yeah. You and Michael Burger. I've known you guys for more than 37 years in this town, and you have no plan. You've, you've been very steady in speaking to, to the power. Thank you for supporting BIPOC community. If people don't know, please know tonight. I'm going from blushing to passing out here. If you don't, I know. Don't stop. Well, this. I, I'll tell you, the two of you better come up with something really good after that comment because the rest of us are just like, what? You what? Know? What is she talking about? It's true. I know it's true. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Thank you, Mr. Vernon Jones. So you all work on that. Thank you, Mr. Bachman, for being here this evening. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Ferreira, for continuing to work with me on this. And uh, we'll, we'll keep you all informed. I will be in touch as the point person with um, uh, Dr. Shabazz over the next few days to sort of check in with her to see what's coming up next time. If I get any information, I'll certainly send that through to you, Ms. Moyston and, and the group. And I, I think we're, we're, we're doing the work. Uh, we're doing the work. And uh, it, it's, it's not easy all the time. So thank you all for, for doing what you do. And... Uh, uh, I think that's it. So can, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Ms. Pat, second? Seconded. Ms. Ferreira, thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned as of 7.51 p.m. Thank you all for your hard work. Thank you again, Mr. Bachman and Ms. Moyston for your support from the town. And um, we look forward to meeting next week. Thank you all. Bye, Thanks, everybody. everybody. Good work, folks. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.